Bucknutters, welcome into the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, February 26th, 2016. I am Dave Biddle, happy to be joined by our Alex Gleitman. Alex, I think every Buckeye fan is excited about uh, Juco transfer Malcolm Pridgen. You know, even Urban Meyer talked him up on signing day, said he's going to be in the running to be the starting right tackle. And I think when Urban Meyer said that, everybody just took it and ran with it, thought, oh, it's, he's a lock, he's going to be the starting right tackle. My question for you, is there any danger of Pridgen not graduating from his community college in time to enroll at Ohio State in June? Well, I mean, I think with every guy who signed, there's technically dangers. I mean, they all have to finish their classes. They all have to, you know, get the appropriate test scores and things of that nature. So, you know, I I don't think it's anything um, crazy as far as danger. But, you know, Malcolm does have to finish another semester. Um, He does have to finish a couple other courses that he may actually have to take, I think, uh, either during late May or June, kind of like a first summer semester, um, so that the plan is actually to get him down at Ohio State on, I believe, like July 1st or the beginning of July, maybe right after the holiday. Uh, So... Uh, right now, you know, there, the plan is in place. Uh, he's following that plan. He's a, he's a kid who takes his academics very seriously. He's working really hard to kind of make all of his dreams a reality. So, uh, you know, while there, while there technically are things that need to be done uh, for Malcolm to make it to Ohio State as planned in early July, uh, there are no, you know, serious concerns that those things won't happen. So I expect him to be there at the beginning of July. And Jamarco Jones, I've been told Jamarco Jones is just going to rep at right tackle during the spring. A lot of people thought he might rep at both right guard and right tackle, but I'm hearing he's the starting right tackle until further notice. Now things can change once Malcolm Pridgen gets on campus, but just like you said, I mean, there's a very good chance that Pridgen will not enroll at Ohio State in June. All signs point to him enrolling in time for training camp, but just in the event that, you know, Pridgen doesn't enroll until, you know, really late, you know, they have to have a right tackle ready, and that would be Jamarco Jones right now. Now, things can change. You know, Jamarco Jones could move to right guard in fall camp if need be. Uh, but right now I'm hearing two main reasons that Jamarco Jones is just playing right tackle. Uh, you know, the uncertainty with Pridgen. And there's three really good candidates at right guard with Evan Lyle, Demetrius Knox, and Matt Burrell. So they feel like one of those guys can step up at right guard and hopefully Jamarco Jones can lock down right tackle. And then if Pridgen comes in and shows he's the best right tackle, good problem to have. I know you have very good sources. What are you hearing on that front? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess I kind of see it almost a different way. Number one, Jamarco Jones has only been playing tackle since he's arrived at Ohio State. I mean, this guy, if anything, he was like the most heralded guy out of all, you know, Pridgen, uh, Prince, and then Jamarco Jones as far as like being in the program, having experience, knowing the tackle position. It was just it was almost actually thought of that when, once Taylor Decker was down, that Jamarco Jones might even start as the left tackle. But, you know, I think Isaiah Prince is built better for left tackle. Jamarco is probably better for, for right tackle. Actually, when I thought, you know, when he came in, I always thought he'd be a better guard anyway. But I guess, you know, the way I see it is that's Jamarco, as you said, it's Jamarco's job until he loses that or until someone proves that maybe they could play tackle position as well and Jamarco moves inside as one of the best five. So I think because of that and also the fact that, as you mentioned, there are Better, there are almost better candidates for that guard position than there are uh, alternatively for the tackle position outside of Jamarco Jones and Isaiah Prince. I think Brandon Bowen, Kevin uh, Fetter are going to be are both going to be very good players in time. Um, but I but I, at the same time I don't think they're ready to step in and play the tackle position. And I don't think there's uncertainty with Malcolm. I think he'll end up being on campus in July. But right now in spring he is not there. And so really your options are either play one of the, the redshirt freshmen. Uh, at right tackle or play Jamarco Jones there. And I think you need to prepare Jamarco Jones there at tackle. I'm sure he'll rep a little bit at guard and practice and things of that, and some of the scrimmages and things of that, just, just to kind of get him the experience and learn the position um, on the field. But uh, it's obviously a lot easier to move a tackle and a guard than it is vice versa. So I think, you know, Malcolm not being there in the spring, you get Jamarco repping at right tackle. It's a much better situation. And maybe you see, hey, maybe Evan Lyle or Demetrius Knox or Matt Burrell or Kyle Trout or one of those guys in there actually see the opportunity at, uh, you know, an open guard position and, and make the coach's decision even that much harder come fall. 
The NFL Combine really gets rolling later today uh, on NFL Network uh, from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. today. It's going to feature the running backs and the offensive linemen today. So that means Ezekiel Elliott and Taylor Decker, they will run, they will lift, they will go through everything. Our Steve Hellwagon is there covering it. So we still don't have an exact time on when Zeke will run his 40, but it will be on NFL Network today, and that's going to be really cool to see how well Ezekiel Elliott does. He measured in at six foot. On the nose, 225 pounds, that is exactly what he was listed at as Ohio State. He also has the biggest hands of any running back at the combine, a little over uh, 10 inches on his hands. And uh, Taylor Decker measured in at 6'7", 310 pounds. So both those young men uh, will test and run later today. And then Saturday, also from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., that will feature the quarterbacks, the wide receivers, and the tight ends. So five former Buckeyes, Cardale Jones, Braxton Miller, Mike Thomas, Jalen Marshall and Nick Vanette will work out run on Saturday. Then Sunday features defensive linemen and linebackers, four prominent Buckeyes there, Joey Bosa, Adolphus Washington, Josh Perry, Darren Lee, and then the combine wraps up on Monday with defensive backs from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., three more Buckeyes, Eli Apple, Von Bell, Tyvis Powell. So there's your schedule for the next four days at the NFL Combine. Let's focus on just later today. Friday morning, Friday afternoon here today. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, I just can't wait to see. I think he's going to put on a show. He, you know, he showed that he's just as big as everybody thought he was, six foot, 225 pounds, Alex. He goes out there and runs a 4-4. Good night. I think he's going to be a top 15 pick. Uh, I mean, 4-4, he's probably a top 10 pick at that point. Yeah, you know, you add in the character, the high character of him and and, you know, his ability to pass block, catch the football. I mean, he's just proven it against elite teams, you know, the Alabamas, Oregon, some of the, the better defenses in the Big Ten. He just continues to produce against elite talent. So I, I do think, I mean, I, regardless, I think he's a top ten talent. I don't think he's going to blow anyone out of the water at the combine. I think he's going to put on, like, an overall good performance. I don't think he'll have the highest vertical. I don't think he'll have, maybe he'll have the highest broad jump. But I, and I don't think he'll have the best 40 time of all the running backs there. But I think, He'll just do a really solid job. I see him maybe – I don't see him as a 4-4 guy. Everyone always talks about 4-4. You look at the, the combine every year, and, and the times are always slower than people think the guys run. And that's – there's nothing wrong with that. It's, I, I just think, you know, there's different ways, you know, to time the 40 and, and things of like that laser and the electronic timing and the hand timing. And there's just different scores reported. And as you know, times are juiced up these days, whether it be recruiting or by colleges and stuff. Like Braxton Miller is not going to run you know, a sub 4-3 or a low 4-3 like it's been reported at Ohio State that he could run. Uh, but, you know, I, I do expect Ezekiel Elliott to run a very good time. If it's in the high 4 four, that's outstanding. I think it's going to be in the low 4 five, which I think is still very good considering, you know, you, you put on the film and you watch what he does there. He, he certainly has that breakaway speed and, and great vision and things like that. And I think he'll jump well. I think he'll lift well. He's a strong kid. And, uh, you know, I, I think he's just going to have an overall really solid performance. It doesn't to me. It's all about need where he gets picked. I mean, if a team decides until like the New York Jets at twenty or the Houston Texans at twenty-two that they don't need a running back in that first round, especially with the way you know teams use two-back systems in today's game, I just think that that's not Ezekiel Elliott's fault. I think he's going to do everything. He's going to put himself in the position um, to be the first running back taken, and I think that's all that that matters uh, at the end of the day. So whether that's you know ten to the New York Giants or. In the 20s, I don't know what that's going to be, but I think he's going to put a really good performance on both at the combine and potentially at OSU's pro day to, to solidify him as the number one back taken. You and I will have to bet a Chipotle burrito with extra E. coli on this. I do think that Zeke's will, will run in the 4-4s, four maybe high 4-4s. Four we'll see. I think the over-under, I think a safe over-under is 4.5, so we'll see if uh, – he runs just under 4.5 or just over 4.5. Either way, I, I'm with you. If he, let's say he does run 4.52 or something like that, he will be the number one running back taken. He will be a top 20 pick at the very worst, in my opinion. Maybe he'll go to your Houston Texans at 22. I know that that's what you're really hoping. You can just be honest okay. about that. You would love to see your Houston Texans. That would be a steal, by the way. I don't think he will slip hey. that far, but that would be that, that would be great for your Houston Texans. Go ahead. I'll out goes Foster, in comes uh, Ezekiel Elliott. I've been I've been saying since the end of last year. I, I think Foster and Elliott are is a great comparison. The boat, the way they both you know catch the ball out of the backfield, are three down backs, protect the quarterback, just do all the little things. Great vision, ability to cut in the zone blocking scheme. I I think uh, you know I'm a Houston Texans fan. I'm not going to hide that. And 
I would love for Ezekiel Elliott to be on the Texans. I think that would be a perfect fit, and they would give Bill O'Brien actually something to base his offense on. Uh, you know, Christian Hackenberg's probably going to need that when they take him in the second round. Oh, gosh. Good, <laughs> good luck with uh, Christian Hackenberg in the second <laughs> round. At least you wouldn't take him in the first round. That's the, you know, every, everything I heard for like the first three years of his career, or during his entire career at Penn State was, oh, he could be the number one overall pick of the draft. At this time last year, a lot of people were predicting Christian Hackenberg would not only be a first-round pick, but the number one overall pick of the draft. At least now he's projected as a second rounder, perhaps a third rounder. Um, so we'll see what happens. Ezekiel will run later today. Alex and I are, are betting a Chipotle burrito on this. Um, before I let you go, uh, I mentioned the rest of the schedule. I mean, 14 guys are here at the Combine. Uh, again, Zeke and Taylor Decker will work out and run later today. Um, not just focusing on those guys. The entire group of guys, all 14 guys, give me one or two guys that you're really, really looking forward to seeing how they test, uh, how they run, just anything at the Combine. It's going to be curious. Uh, you know, I'm curious to see – um, I'm, I'm curious to see Joshua Perry. I think, uh, you know, it's going to be really interesting. There's, there's been times, uh, I thought he was a lot better this year, but there was, you know, the last couple of years before that, there were times where he just looked extremely slow on the football field. Um, I think it was a, a more of a case of him taking bad angles uh, versus his speed. But, you know, he is, you know, we've seen it, we've heard it. He's an athletic freak. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how teams view him. Is he a 3 4 uh is, sorry, is he a 4-3 defensive end, rush end? Is he a 3-4 outside linebacker? Is he a 4-3 outside linebacker? It's going to be really interesting to see um, kind of how he performs. I think it's also going to be interesting to see how Cardale Jones performs. That's a guy who I feel has a, a lot of opportunity, um, you know, during this uh, the combine to kind of boost his stock a little bit. He's probably, to me, maybe a fourth or fifth round pick right now. Maybe he can move up into the third. Um, and then I think the guy who everyone's going to have eyes on is Michael Thomas. Uh, he measured in 6'3", 212 pounds, a 10 and a half inch hands. I mean, ideal measurables right there. Uh, and, you know, it's just I think the 40-yard dash for him is going to be absolutely huge. You know, he's, he's not a burner. He's not going to beat you over the top. He's a possession receiver. He's a big, tall, split end who's going to, you know, go up and get the football and just make plays. But at the same time, you know, they want to see him run, um, you know, four fives would be fantastic, and it might even put him into the first round as, you know, a potential lock in the first round if he runs in the four fives. It's going to be a lot of fun this weekend. Starting today, our Steve Hellwagon is there covering it. If you're a uh, Buckeye football fan starting for football, and I know that's pretty much everybody who is listening to this show, this is a fun way to get your fix here in the winter time as we wait for real football. And we're just, you know, a week and a half away from Ohio State spring practice starting, but this uh, NFL Combine this weekend is going to be a lot of fun with Ohio State setting the all-time record with 14 players invited to the Combine. And all 14 of these guys will get drafted, so it's going to be a lot of fun, not only the Combine, but leading up to the draft and seeing where these guys go. And uh, it's just going to be uh, – and we'll see if they can break their all-time record. Ohio State set the record back in 2004 – with 14 players drafted, another group that won a national championship, and uh, you know, two years before they were drafted, and this group will at least tie that. We'll see if maybe a Chase Ferris or somebody can be that 15th draft pick. I, I tend to doubt it, but at least 14 guys will be drafted. Alex, thank you very much for your time and your insights. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me, Dave. Always great to be on the BM5. Bro.